I want to thank you today for uh, listening in on our uh, on our third in a series of three uh, presentations on Maximo upgrades. Uh, this is a re-recording of an upgrade uh, webinar that we um, presented a couple of weeks ago. Uh, for those that uh, sat through that, um, we apologize for the technical difficulties that we had that day, and uh, hopefully this retape of this third webinar will be of value to you. And again, we apologize for the technical difficulties originally. Hopefully this one will uh, be taped properly. Uh, I'm joined today uh, by Stephen Schul, who is a, an advanced deployment professional for Project Tech. And today we're going to uh, speak to some of the upgrade considerations and do a bit of a process overview. As far as the uh, format here, um, if you do have any questions after you go through this webinar, please feel free to submit those to info at projecttech.com. Uh, we'll do our best at that point to try and respond to your questions in a timely manner. And uh, we'll also post any Q&A uh, the questions and answers on our website um, in the uh, in the upgrade uh, resources portion of our website. First, let's talk a little bit about Project Tech. Uh, very quickly, Project Tech is a privately held company that was established in 1990. We're headquartered in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, we are an IBM Premier business partner. Um, our our Primary services hosting Maximo is a cloud solution, um, and we recently, in 2012, received an award from IBM, a Pivotal Software Award, for that service. Uh, we we are Maximo experts. Uh, we provide system administration, help desk support, um, and training to our cloud clients. Uh, we have performed many uh, Maximo upgrades, uh, starting from version 4x. Today, we're going to go through um, these topics that you see on your screen here. First, we're going to we're going to talk about some good Maximo upgrade resources for you. Um, we're going to discuss the requirements, the software requirements for performing the upgrade some special considerations for those of you who might be upgrading from version 4 or 5. Um, we'll go through some pre-upgrade tests. We'll overview the process of the upgrade, uh, take you a little bit into, um, into the IBM integrity checker. Um, we'll discuss some about custom scripting uh, that might be required uh, to make it through the upgrade, and we'll touch briefly on some more complicated scenarios that you might want to consider, uh, and in some cases uh, also consider uh, getting some help. Okay, uh, we're intentionally uh, showing a link here to IBM Maximo Upgrade resources that are provided by IBM. Uh, we're going to speak to some of the content that's within uh, their resource documents, their presentations. That's an excellent resource for those that are looking to perform uh, a Maximo upgrade. Um, we don't want to rehash too much of that, but we're going to highlight some of the items that are uh, part of that content. We also have our own uh, upgrade Resource Center on our website. The URL um, is listed here on uh, the PowerPoint page. Um, one thing to note is that to be able to upgrade and get access to the upgrade utilities, uh, you must be current on your IBM software and support. Uh, that will be required in order to be able to submit the forms to be able to download the software as well as to download your Maximo 7.5 software. Um, if you have not maintained your software and support with IBM but have a desire to upgrade, 
certainly feel free to contact Project Tech and uh, we'll be happy to help you map out a path forward uh, to running Maximo 7.5, which is the latest and greatest version of Maximo. Okay, first we're going to speak some to the software requirements. Um, to upgrade your Maximo database, you, first off, you if you're at uh, a Maximo 4 or 5 level, your software, your essentially your database does need to be patched to uh, the patch levels that are mentioned above. So for Maximo 411, it'd be patch 8. For Maximo 5.1, you can be at the base level or patch 5. And then for Maximo 5.2, uh, you would need to be at patch 5. So um, those patches, if you're, again, if you have your, your SMS paid up, uh, you would be able to obtain these patches from IBM for your, for your software and uh, get to the appropriate patch level to then be able to upgrade uh, to, uh, to the next version of Maxima. OK, um, a separate upgrade is required between major versions. So if you're at version 4, um, as an example you see here, if you're at 411, first you're going to need to upgrade to 5.1. Then there's a separate upgrade from 5.1 or, or 5.2 all the way to 3.6.1 and up to 6.2. Um, version 6.2, you would then upgrade to version 7.1, and from 7.1, you'd upgrade to 7.5. So if you're at version 4.1, it is, it is really four separate upgrades that you're going to have to go through. Um, an important note here would be that if you do have industry solutions or add-ons, uh, those industry and solution add-ons must be version matched through each version upgrade. Um, so again, there's more on the Upgrade Resources pages on the IBM website. You'll see uh, some specific information around what those version matches are as you go along. OK. Um, uh, the, uh, an important thing to note related to the upgrades is that each of these versions of Maxmo um, obviously, were developed uh, and and, uh, and supported uh, in certain points in time, and were version matched to the uh, database platforms that they ran on at that time. Um, so, the uh, the Maximo 4 product was really just certified to run on SQL Server 2000, and and that's uh, from a SQL Server platform. That would be the only version of SQL Server um, that you could run on. So uh, the point here is that as you're going through uh, the upgrade process, you'll have to make sure that you have the, uh, the database software uh, at the appropriate versions uh, to be able to match that up as you go through the upgrade process. We'll speak to more to that in a minute. Um, Another thing to note is that in some cases you're you're actually going to need multiple workstations or servers to be able to go through this upgrade process. So uh, plan on having specific upgrade resources, uh, whether it's virtual servers, physical servers. Um, you'll need possibly multiples of those, multiple instances of uh, the database software, and uh, and, and possibly. Um, as you're doing that, one thing to keep in mind is there's also operating system requirements uh, for some of those versions as well. So we listed some here for Maximo 411 and 51. You would need Windows XP, Windows 2000, or Windows 2003. Those those versions of the software will not run on a Windows 2008 platform. Um, Maximo 5x to 62, same versions. And then for Maximo 7 and greater, you can run those utilities on a Windows 2008 and higher platform. Or actually, probably just Windows 2008 for some of the Maximo 7 software. OK, so this is one of the, the, the um, slides off of an IBM um, 
a set of documentation, but it's it's really good at um, at displaying some of these uh, these actual upgrades that are going to have to occur, as well as the database platforms that um, were applicable to each of the upgrades. So uh, at the very top, you'll see in the light blue, you'll see um, a, the very first set of upgrades from a Maxima 4 to a ver version 5 platform in that light blue. Uh, those would be version matched to an Oracle 9i platform or a SQL Server 2000 platform. So that those database platforms would actually be applicable all the way through Maxima 6.1. So as you're going from version 4 all the way up to version 6.1, um, any of those versions would uh, be applicable to and need to run on an Oracle 9i or a SQL Server 2000 uh, database platform. So, so the um, the very top set of upgrade from a Maxima 4 to a Maxima 5.1 that's a given set of upgrade utilities that are provided uh, by IBM uh, that you can download from their website. Um, that would take you, those set of utilities would take you from Maximo 4.1 to uh, Maximo 5.1 patch 0. Then there's a second set of utilities that would take you essentially all the way up from Maximo 5.1 all the way up to uh, Maximo 625, and that's the Maximo, uh, the upgrade utilities that are labeled 6511. So that set of uh, upgrade utilities would take you from any of those versions that you see there, or Maximo 51, uh, all the way up through Maximo 61. Those 6511 utilities, upgrade utilities, are required to perform that second upgrade. So um, once you're at that level, and you're at a 625 level, then you see everything else in, in purple there um, is going to be really a, a function of using uh, up, up, upgrade utilities that are included with uh, those sets of software. So to go from 625 to 628, you would just be running a normal update DB process that comes with the 628 software. There are no specific update or upgrade utilities other than the ones that come with the software. Um, and you do see, you'll see that for uh, Maximo 6, there is a, a, an Oracle 10 platform, SQL Server 2000 platform that's applicable all the way up through um, a Maximo 6 level. And then once you get to Maximo 7, then you're certified on an Oracle 11i platform, and at a certain point, you're able to run SQL Server 2008 as well. Okay, so again, a key point here is that you're, you really have to make sure that you have the applicable um, database version, uh, platform version uh, synced with the requirement with the required version for um, for that particular upgrade. Okay, this is a pretty busy diagram, but it's it's a, it's a very nice high level overview of uh, some of the utilities that that you might need to uh, have installed uh, within your environment to be able to perform the upgrade. So uh, again. Uh, at the very top row, you're looking at the upgrade from maximum four to five. You you have upgrade specific set of upgrade utilities that have a dependency on patch eight of four one one for your environment would require either Oracle nine or SQL Server, and there's there's no specific uh, there's no web server that's required for that version. So you see on the on the far right hand side, there's no specific dependency to a web server. Coming down to the second row, you're getting into the, the Maximo 5 upgrade to go from 5 to 6. Um, and you will see that um, there, there is some uh, installed there 
of a Maximal 5 control center would be helpful uh, to be able to perform that upgrade. So there is a, a, a dependency there. And if you're going to need to um, perform update DB or, or uh, DB config activities, you would need uh, WebSphere software um, installed and running on the far right-hand side as well. So again, same, same thing going through on the version 6 software. You'll see that there are separate utilities there and all of the dependencies that are required. You should not need a web server to do the, the database upgrade for a Maximo 6 platform. You should be able to perform a config DB and, and update DB scripts. Um, and it, it's pretty much completely a database upgrade. When you get to Mac Maximo 7, um, you, you do have a separate install. You have to completely install Maximo 7, uh, 7 1, and you do have to have uh, all of the middleware configured uh, and all of that to be able to do that, uh, to do that upgrade. Uh, one thing to note on the far right hand side is that um, that you can run the Maximo 7.1 software on the same uh, same WebSphere versions that are supported with uh, Maximo 7.5. So you can you can avoid having to install the older version of WebSphere there to to get through that upgrade. Uh, and as well, you can pretty much run Maximo. Um, on the same database platform for version 7 as you can 7.5. And then on the very bottom row you see um, the 7.5 environment you would have uh, you'd have to create to be able to run Maximo 7.5 anyway. So um, that that environment there on that bottom row you would pretty much um, already have that one configured. Uh, that would be a put. So the, the point that I would make here in looking at this slide is if, if you're going from version 4 to version 7.5, there's a potential to have um, at least three upgrade workstations or upgrade environments uh, that you might have to install and configure in order to be able to upgrade fully from version 4 all the way up through version 7.5. Okay, so from the standpoint of the software requirements, the, the more versions you're upgrading, uh, the more complex the, the requirements are to meet and match uh, the required version levels of, of both operating system, DBMS, uh, the entire chain. Um, and in most cases, you'll need uh, those legacy DBMS um, versions available. Um, for uh, between the legacy version that you're running and the Maximo 7.5 uh, versions that you're going to need to run in the, the future as well. So the, the version matching on that is all, is all very important. OK, some considerations for those that are upgrading from version 4 and 5. Um, some of the most, the biggest changes in architecture um, really were between version 4 and 5. So version 4 and 1 was completely client-server architecture. 5 and above uh, are complete JT web architecture. Um, so uh, a pretty sizable leap from version 4 to version 5. Lots of structural changes to the database that, that went along with that. Uh, with Maximal 5, they also introduced uh, multi-org, multi-site capabilities. So, um, so with version five, you have the ability to run uh, multiple, uh, what used to be multiple separate instances of version four, you could combine into a single version five application um, and run a single application for multiple sites. So uh, that was a sizable change from version four to five. And then in Ma Maximo six, um, introduced major changes to the underlying framework and, and the database schema. So the schema was redesigned in some cases. Good example is that in what was called equipment in version 4 and 5, 
um, is now uh, is now referred to as assets. The uh, application designer application was implemented in all of the screen design moved from uh, JSP for version 5 into XML that's stored in the database. And there's a full GUI for designing those screens that came with Maxmo 6. Um, the database configuration application is now part of the web uh, front end, so, um, so you, you step closer to being able to fully manage and configure Maxmo through the front end. Um, and then the Maximo Enterprise Adapter um, was really uh, much more robust in version 6. And all of this that you see in Maximo 6 essentially became the framework for the current version of the application. So um, version 4 and 5 um, screen customizations are a place where you're going to need to really, um, you're going to need to plan for some uh, additional work. Version 4 screens were, they do not upgrade at all uh, automatically. You're, you'll definitely have to plan for identifying what all of your, your custom fields are and, uh, you know, do any design uh, customization of your screens within the, the current version of the application. Um, Maximo 5 had some upgrade utilities to be able to upgrade those screens, uh, but it's a pretty painful process, and in the end, Project just recommends that um, you plan for an adequate amount of time uh, within your project plan to review and manually re-implement any of those customizations within the application designer. Okay, continuing on. With the Maximo 4 and 5 considerations, the um, in version 6, yes or no fields are stored as a Boolean yes or no. And in version 4 and 5, those were Y and N alphanumeric uh, fields. So uh, the reason we mention this here is that if you have saved queries that are um, looking at those yes or no fields, you're going to have to manually adjust those queries to, to deal with that data type change. Same thing on, um, uh, you know, in other areas of the system where uh, you, you have, uh, you have uh, some hard-coded uh, values looking for Y's and N's, you'll have to make sure that you adjust those to uh, look at for a Boolean 1 or 0. Uh, and then on security groups, Maximo 6, they implemented a huge overhaul of the security system in Maximo. And um, essentially with Maximo 6, you now have the ability to have users in multiple security groups and the security subsystem will, will merge or can merge those groups together and to create a single security profile for each user. Um, there's a lot of benefit of this design, and it, it, we really just recommend that you plan to scrap anything that might be upgraded from version 4 or 5 and look at um, the, the re-engineering of your security groups to fully utilize the uh, functionality that comes with the version 6 and above security architecture. Okay. For uh, one other consideration, the, um, for version 4 and 5, the users and authentication within the system, um, users were stored as database user accounts. So um, the credentials for each user's login was actually a database user. And so if you're upgrading and you are um, doing that upgrade on a non-production server, you're, you've, you've copied your database elsewhere and you're going to do your upgrade elsewhere, you'll need to make sure that you, uh, that you include those users as part of your, your transport from your production database server into the, the upgrade database server. Those user accounts will need to exist um, in order for the upgrade to uh, succeed properly uh, without stripping out 
key data out of the system that you would want upgraded. Uh, you, will need, you will need to plan for um, every user having a, a lab, labor record, a re, excuse me, a labor record uh, within version five. So, um, so that can be scripted, or you can create labor records manually in your system ahead of time for for each of your users. And uh, just a warning here would be to be sure and uh, review any of the uh, security group. Uh, warnings uh, and user warnings and to resolve those things before you start the upgrade process otherwise the upgrade processing will delete uh, key sets of information that you might not want to have deleted. Okay at this time I'm going to turn it over to Stephen Schull to go through the rest of the presentation. All right, thank you, Mark. Um, I just wanted to go over a couple of things. Uh, we'll start with some of the pre-upgrade tasks. Um, a, a lot of people underestimate the amount of knowledge, um, both Maximo schema and metadata knowledge and the SQL skills that are required to do an upgrade. Um, you want to make sure you understand how the data is architected because um, that will allow you to help troubleshoot the errors, figure out where you're missing records that you need to have, where the data is incorrect, um, et cetera. Some of the common stuff, um, you're dealing a lot with indexes, so the maxis keys, maxis index table. Um, the objects and um, tables that are configured, the max object, max tables, um, and definitely a lot with attributes. Um, which are either in the max attribute or max is columns table. Um, you need to make sure you understand how those are done as well as their corresponding config tables um, to make sure that all the data is in sync between them um, and make sure that all the data properly reflects the actual database um, schema. Um, and of course, as you need to resolve these issues um, as the integrity checker, the validate, um, or even the upgrade, as those error out, you need to be able to write SQL statements to identify the issues um, and potentially even to resolve those issues if necessary. All right. All right. Um, so again, indexes are a common situation. Um, you definitely want to make sure that if you've modified any existing indexes, um, or potentially created new ones or potentially maybe even deleted some at some point. Um, and the best way to identify that is just to create a base um, or demo database um, because those will have all the indexes that would exist out of the box. Um, and then that way you can compare the indexes between the two systems, make sure that there's no discrepancies between whether or not it's unique, um, make sure that it has the right amount of columns Make sure that you haven't removed the columns or added additional ones to make up that key. Um, same thing with missing indexes. You definitely want to make sure any index that would exist in an out-of-the-box install exists in your install. Um, Maximo will assume those indexes exist and will actually write the SQL statements to ensure that it hits those indexes. If it can't hit those indexes, not only is it going to make your upgrade take longer, um, it could potentially um, cause other issues down the road. Um, make sure that the data, that, or make sure that um, any new indexes that you've defined on your database, um, make sure that you followed a naming convention, uh, make sure it's defined in the maximum metadata, otherwise it'll be lost. Uh, and make sure that it, if it's unique, that it's something that won't impact what Maximo is already doing. If you're trying to load data from one table into another table and you define something unique um, and that value won't be unique anymore, um, that'll cause issues with the upgrade. Um, and if it's really not necessary or if you're probably going to recreate it, it may be best just to drop the index instead of having to worry about um, causing potential issues with naming, um, naming conventions. Um, database triggers. 
especially if you're dealing with like um, SQL Server, Oracle, whatever, make sure that any non-out-of-the-box triggers are disabled. Obviously, they'd be firing otherwise as the upgrade process continues, which will slow down your upgrade. Um, it could potentially notify thousands of people if you send out emails or whatever through the database triggers. Um, just be sure that you don't disable the out-of-the-box ones if you're using Oracle to keep track of road stamp and stuff like that. Okay. Um, if you've done any manual back-end changes, uh, maybe you've created tables for integrations or um, created some views to help uh, review the data or report against the data, um, make sure that's defined in Maximo. Um, pretty often these tables are just created at the database level. Um, and then when Maximo identifies those tables, um, it could cause issues. It may just give you a warning, or if it tries to use that table name in the upgrade, it could cause an error. Um, just make sure that everything's defined in Maximo. Um, make sure that if you've changed whether or not a field is required, um, be aware that a lot of times during the upgrade that, that could potentially cause issues. Um, in V4, a lot of people on work order would make work type or priority required. Um, the problem is during the upgrade on the 4 to 5, all of the WP operation records are loaded into the work order table. Those do not have a work type or priority by default, um, and so that will cause an issue where your entire upgrade will just hang. It won't ever complete, um, so definitely be aware. Other cases, it will actually just give you an error, um, so try not to change any of the requirements for the field. Ask is to make sure that you keep track of all the amount, uh, all the record counts of the tables um, before and after the upgrade. Um, the reason for this is obviously you want to be able to validate that all the information from your old system carried over into the new system. Um, the only thing that you have to be aware of is not everything is a straight mapping. Um, WP operations, which used to be the task and work order. Um, are now just part of the main work order table. Um, POs that were a type of blanket now come into contract um, and various uh, other functionality like that. Um, but you should be able to account for all the records before and after the upgrade. Otherwise, you're missing data, um, which means the maximum upgrade utility deleted data for one reason or another. All right. Um, the process, um, Mark pretty much covered it earlier, um, but the very first step, obviously, is you need to make sure that you're at the necessary patch level for your version. Um, you can't upgrade unless you're at the absolute version that you need. Um, make sure that during each step, there's typically pre-upgrade steps in the upgrade guide. Um, whether it be dropping statistics or whether it be ensuring certain indexes exist, um, et cetera. Make sure that you do all those before proceeding. Um, make sure that you run integrity. Integrity has to pass on your database um, in order for you to continue. Once you do the integrity, um, there's another step of validation. Um, typically, there shouldn't be any scripting or anything else that you need to do in the validation. Um, everything should already be resolved from the integrity step. The validation is just another check. Um, the upgrade step um, is obviously typically the most time consuming process of all of them. Um, and that's where it will actually upgrade your database from, um, say, version 4.1 up to 5.1. Um, in certain situations, um, say you're upgrading from 5 to 6, um, before you can continue, you have to get your version 6 database up to the 6.2 patch level. Um, and so that will require that you run update DB. Um, the one exception to this rule um, is that for 7.1 to 7.5, there is no actual upgrade step. It's just running update DB. Um, 
Obviously, you want to make sure when you run Integrity that you start off using the report functionality. Um, there's two options, whether or not you want to do a report or you want to attempt a repair. Um, the report will try to list all the known issues that it can think of, um, but it will not try to resolve any of them. Um, we strongly recommend that you run this first um, so you can identify what all of your issues are, resolve the issues that you want to resolve yourself um, before you actually run it in repair mode. Um, repair does try to resolve some of the issues, um, but does not try to resolve all of them. Some of the um, resolutions that it will make will still require that you run a DB config. Uh, it may not resolve as you would expect it to resolve, um, particularly if you're dealing with data type, length issues, whatever. Um, it may do the opposite of what you actually want. Uh, and it may still require manual intervention. Like I said, it doesn't try to resolve all the known issues. Um, so it may still require that you actually intervene and write your own SQL scripts in order to resolve those issues. Both of these um, try to, like I said, identify all warnings or errors. Um, one of them must run um, without any errors in order to continue to validation. Um, that means you can have warnings and still continue on to validation. Um, but not all warnings stay a warning. Um, occasionally, if what's a warning in integrity may actually be an error in validation. Um, so I wouldn't ignore any warning messages. It also may be a signal to you that some data may get deleted. Um, again, as Mark mentioned earlier, specifically if you think users and groups, um, those are warning messages. Um, but when those get resolved, um, that data will actually be deleted, um, which is most likely not the solution that you would want. Um, and of course, obviously running Integrity only tries to validate your Maximo install. It doesn't guarantee data integrity. So if back-end database updates or deletes or inserts or whatever happened, um, it doesn't try to validate data in that sense. It's only trying to validate the structure. Um, very often, um, there's a, a set of scripts that we have to run um, when we're upgrading from versions of Maximo um, that aren't really handled, um, at least eloquently, by the integrity validation upgrade utility. Um, one of those, um, as we mentioned before, is that between 4 and 5, all user records need to have a labor code. Um, so if you're not utilizing that functionality in version 4, um, it's not too complicated to script the creation of those labor records. Um, that way, you don't have to sit there and manually fix all of them ahead of time inside your V4 system. Um, in all cases, um, dropping statistics. Um, SQL Server statistics will show up to Maximo like indexes, um, and it'll cause errors with the integrity and validation step. Um, so you have to make sure that you drop statistics. Um, missing groups, obviously, again, you know, trying to resolve um, security groups that for one reason or another don't exist in the system anymore. Um, and of course, in v4, you had a lot of different exe processes um, that you may have extended or created new ones or created some custom applications inside your own system, um, and you need to remove those. Version 5 to 6. Um, particularly meter labels, um, remarks on the columns in terms of your Maxis columns table, making sure that all your columns have remarks. Um, missing storage partitions or incorrect storage partition name on the table. Um, and of course, trying to validate that you have valid URN data, uh, meaning no nulls, nothing outside a yes or a no things like that. And from 6 to 7, again, some uh, user-defined URN fields may not um, be properly reflected as a 1 or 0. Um, so you need to make sure that those that data is corrected. Um, make sure that your item set and company set IDs, um, if you use anything other than the um, 
I and or C in your org name. Um, it actually replaces it. Um, so if you were trying to use item set one, for instance, um, you may have to manually resolve your item set and company set issues. Um, just a general series of tips. Um, make sure that you take backups between each step. Um, some of the steps may run 15, 25 minutes. Other steps could take numerous hours um, and, and even days when it comes to the upgrade. Um, so obviously you want to minimize the amount of downtime, um, assuming that one of the steps would fail. You don't want to have to replicate all those changes over again. Um, make sure that you ensure that you have enough adequate drive space. Um, remember that you know between four and five and five and six, the database grows exponentially. So if you don't have enough drive space to handle that, um, you'll run into issues and have to start over. Um, same thing about making sure that your storage partitions are set to automatically expand. Obviously, if it can't get new resources, even if you have the drive space, um, you'll still run into issues. Um, make sure that you review all your logs between the steps. Um, you want to make sure you understand all the warnings, all the errors, um, and see if there's any manual intervention that you need to do. Uh, and the greatest amount, um, the greatest improvement that you can have in reducing your upgrade time um, are by increasing your database resources, um, particularly RAM and CPU. Um, the more of the database that can be held in RAM, um, the faster your upgrade will go. Obviously, more CPU processing. Um, and if you can, uh, SSDs or um, or sand storage could be beneficial when it comes to uh, increasing your disk I.O. Through some of the more complicated scenarios that uh, you might want to consider as part of your upgrade process. So uh, the first scenario here is uh, using the upgrade opportunity or the upgrade process as an opportunity to consolidate multiple legacy databases into a single maximal instance. So um, some, some people have multiple version four instances, or they have and support multiple maximal instances period, whether it's some version four, some version six. The, um, the maximal application really versions six and above really um, are architected and designed to be able to house multiple um, multiple sites and organizations within an enterprise in a single maximal application. Um, doing so would um, possibly uh, allow you to decrease some of the, the, the uh, number of instances that you have and, and be easier to support or, or uh, even provide more um, more a common framework uh, for some of those. So the scenario again here is that multiple instances that you want to combine. Uh, the reasons to consolidate would be to share that framework and maybe even processes across an organization and to simplify your application support for your IT group. Uh, to be able to do that, your your process uh, would be to actually use the upgrade scripts to um, to upgrade each of those individual databases to a common uh, database version, and um, then really merge the the results into a single database. Um, to do that, you'd have to create custom merge processes to combine those upgraded databases and really the, the, the that scripting uh, of those uh, merging of those databases um, can be pretty complicated, but the main thing that you're going to have to make sure you do is that you're going to have to test that upgraded merged database. It does require a pretty high degree of experience with the maximal schema and the design of the, the database as well as really good, uh, um, some really good scripting skills. So um, again, 
um, to take advantage of that that enterprise level um, functionality that Maximo 75 provides. Um, it'd be a good opportunity to to look at that and see if that wouldn't make sense for your organization. Um, another uh, similar but slightly different um, different scenario would be if you're upgrading from version four. Um, in version four, it was not a multi-org, multi-site um, capable uh, application. And so many organizations would use a location hierarchy as a primary method to uh, split operational and site data. Um, it didn't necessarily provide separate security to be able to secure those separate instances, but at least within the, the location hierarchy, you could, you could provide for some level of separation. Um, so as you go into a fully multi-org, multi-site application, you might want to take advantage of those Maximo security capabilities related to separating that access between the sites. Um, so uh, what's required to do that is really a, a good full analysis of the table data that you have in your version 4 uh, instance and um, providing for a map or creation of a map that would split out your locations between separate orgs and sites within your version um, version 75 database. Um, it does again require a high degree of experience uh, and knowledge of the Maximo design schema and uh, also database scripting and really for uh, consideration of this type of approach to take advantage of, again, multi-site capabilities in a version 7.5 application. Our recommendations would be to keep the data in the same organization, uh, if possible, and just limit the split of that data into sites. Uh, we really recommend really thorough analysis of your data as you're going through this process. And this one in particular, um, you really need to test it. Um, thoroughly after you uh, develop those scripts and execute those to split out that, that location hierarchy data into multiple sites. You really need to test it to make sure that your, uh, your scripting was adequate. Um, another flat, uh, another uh, scenario that you might want to consider as part of your upgrade would be uh, whether or not you want to switch database platforms. Um, good example here, a lot of people uh, in version 4 would um, really standardized on an Oracle platform because uh, at the time Oracle was really did have some technical superiority superiority to SQL Server as a database platform when it came to um, multi-user capabilities and reads and writes. Um, and over time, some of those some of those reasons for standardizing on Oracle might have gone away. So um, SQL now being a more mature database product, um, maybe you could standardize or you're, you would like to standardize on SQL Server as a platform over Oracle to try and save cost or whatever. Another good example would be to take advantage of DB2 as the uh, database platform since that is uh, a, a version uh, of, or a database platform that comes with the Maximo software now. So um, in order to do that, um, really again, same thing applies as the others. You have to have a, a good understanding of the Maximo schema design and, and database scripting. Uh, you need to have a good understanding of how Maximo operates uh, on both of those target platforms. Um, you know, the, there, there are some subtle differences um, that, that will make a difference if you're going to do a platform change in, in uh, um, some, some pieces like queries against say queries, some of that type of stuff. Um, and uh, you would need to uh, look at those areas such as safe queries to make sure that you, um, you address uh, DBMS platforms as you're you're looking to do that move from one database platform uh, to the other. 
this is probably one of the most extreme uh, scenarios um, from the standpoint of complexity. A lot of moving parts, and probably our recommendation here would just to be to hire a Maximo professional that has some experience and skill sets in these areas. Okay, um, we're going to wrap up here, and just want to again thank everyone for um, participating, uh, coming coming back to us uh, to to um, to view this webinar today as a makeup for for the one that we presented a couple of weeks ago. Again, we appreciate your patience then and now. Um, if you have any questions or you have any suggestions for future webinars, you can submit those to info at projectech.com or directly to Julie Rampello at jrampello at projectech.com. Uh, be sure to check out our upgrade resources pages for on our website for more information on upgrading to Maximo 7.5 and new features. Again, we thank you for your time and uh, wish you the best in your upgrade project. Take care. <laughs>